morning, McFarland Lutheran Church. I'm glad you could join me today for Facebook Live Devotion on Wednesday, July 22nd. Great to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying this summer day. We are continuing our look and reflection and um, proclamation of the parables in Luke. And today the reading is um, from Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers you from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus offers this parable in the context of his disciples asking him how to pray. The punchline comes in verse 8 when Jesus says that a man will get out of bed at midnight not because of friendship, but because of the persistence of the man banging at his door. The man doesn't stop pounding the door until he gets his answer. But persistence here in the translation I shared may not be the best translation. I learned from David Lowe's that the word is better translated shameless. Shameless. That's not often a word we associate with prayer. Shameless here means putting it all on, on the line. Praying to God is the bold, audacious, and unfailing, confident action. Bold, audacious, unfailingly confident. I don't know about you, but some days I don't feel that. Some days I don't even know where to begin to pray. There are so many needs, so much brokenness and hurt. Do I pray for the frontline medical workers swamped by COVID cases? Do I pray for those who are isolated from support systems because of COVID? Do I pray for those experiencing depression or other mental health illnesses during this pandemic? Do I pray through the headlines on the news? Do I pray as I scroll down my Facebook news feed? Do I pray for our nation and our institutions to honestly wrestle with racial injustice as we witness again and again black and brown lives being taken from us? Sometimes it's just overwhelming to think about how to pray. Yet this parable doesn't focus us on the how, how to pray, or what specific things we need to do to pray, but more guides us to the why. Prayer is being shameless before God. Shame-free, bold, audacious, confident, and confident literally means with faith, by the way.
when we are overwhelmed with the needs of the world, we can confidently bring everything to God. Prayer is active. Active, it's an action. We bring ourselves and the needs of the world to God in trust, in confident trust that God hears and acts like a loving parent toward a child. At times, prayer may be speaking words for a friend in need. Prayer may be thanking God for a doctor or nurse or therapist who helps us heal. Prayer may be boldly advocating for a refugee or someone who is hungry or someone who has no voice. Shameless prayer is not only words, but actions. It's not just passive, it's active. Actions, activities that show we are confident in God's care and love for the world. The why of prayer is what this parable shows us. Bold trust that the God who came in Jesus understands our hurts and disappointments and indeed suffers with us. The why of prayer points us to the cross and beyond the cross, knowing that death is not the last word of the God who will make us and this whole creation new. Praying is living in bold, audacious, and confident ways, knowing that God is with us. So when we feel overwhelmed, this parable gets us moving one small step at a time to bang the doors for bread, to open locks for the excluded, to offer compassion for the hurting, to boldly seek justice and reconciliation for those who lack basic freedoms. The small, the, the specific steps of prayer don't matter. What matters is that we persist and trust that God hears and provides what we need. In other words, dear friends, pray shamelessly. Try it out. Let us pray. Gracious and life-giving God, you teach us that we can boldly and shamelessly pray to you. Strengthen our trust, deepen our trust in your loving care for the needs of ourselves and the world this day. Inspire us to prayer that takes the shape of actions for the safety, well-being, and good of our neighbors. Into your hands we place ourselves this day, trusting that you will make everything new through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, dear friends. God bless you and keep you in God's resurrection, truth, and grace. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.